it's like when we review the, the past year, we always just think about like the good things, you know, the, the successes. Oh, I got a new job or, you know, I got my new car, which is amazing. But a lot of times we never really talk about the bad things. And it's so funny because when I talk about my past year, I always talk about the bad things. I start with the bad thing and I just talk about how I am so happy that they happened. The, the bad things that we go through are usually what create our greatest breakthroughs. And our greatest breakthroughs are usually what create our identity. And I realized that that was my positivity, was that I always see the good and the bad. What's up? It's your boy Tariq Ali and welcome back to That Conversation, a podcast where we have the hard conversations that help us grow. I know, right? <laughs> Just like... We are here. We are here. We are in the new year. Um, I hope you're feeling amazing. I hope you're feeling fulfilled. I hope you're feeling excited for this episode. Anyone who has listened to this uh, podcast um, and listened to more than one episode or maybe just one, um, I know it's become a thing at this point where you really savor because you don't really know when I'll post another episode. <laughs> um, and in this first season of this podcast, I wanted it to feel like that. If you tune into this podcast every time I post, you're working on yourself. You're working on yourself. And um, it's not easy. And, and, I, and I, that's why I post when I cry, when I'm not okay. Because I want to show people that it's not easy, but we can do it. And we can do it together. So if you're back, thank you for coming back. And also, I'm proud of you because this stuff takes a lot of work. You have, to, you have to do some self-reflection. Like, there's no way that you listen to me consistently and you don't think about yourself. <laughs> I started this, um, like, May last year. Um, and what I love about this podcast and what I want to continue to do with this podcast is I want it to feel like you're on the phone with me. <laughs> I want to feel like, you know, conversational. Um, and, you know, I don't want to get too pressed about, you know, the gyms and making sure I'm giving good guides because I naturally just will do that. Um, and this year, one of my go one of my goals and something I will do, um, I will do is start doing live podcast um, shows and touring around the country and just bringing all of you guys together so that we can talk about these things together and heal together um, and doing actual talks on stage. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, I can save the, pre the precision and, you know, certain things in that nature of being, you know, more polished for then. But this podcast, I like that it has this like very friendly, conversational, but we're growing and learning all together at the same time. Um, and so I'm going to keep that. Um, but yes, how are you? I hope you're doing good. I know I already started with that probably. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. It's a rainy day in L.A. today. Um, so it's a little gray in the camera. <laughs> but um, it's a rainy day. It's been raining in L.A. like every single day for like two weeks. I'm not exaggerating sorry but yeah it's been a great couple of weeks for me um I got LASIK <laughs> I got LASIK and I'm so happy because I mean I don't even have the worst vision okay I have like it's really not bad that bad it's like negative one um which is like to most if you actually have like you are glasses glasses girl like you Harry Potter girl you or you Daphne girl you drop them glasses you can't even see the tv girl you on the floor looking for them you probably looking at me like girl really um, but the thing is, I could not see like words far away. So driving exits, I would not see it until I got into the got to the exit. And I'm like, dang, I miss I miss my exit. <laughs> um, and so yeah, my vision it, it just I was sick of contacts. I was sick of the glasses. I have ADHD. I lose all of my glasses, um, and I, just all of that. And then the money that you spend. The thing about eyes is that they make you get it done every single year. Like even my prescription has not changed since I was in high school and they still make you get it every single year it's it's a, it's a, it's a it's good um a, a good business tactic okay because the girls that prescriptions don't change they'll never come back and so they make you get a new one so that you can order contacts and glasses again like it has to be from the past year so I'm like with all of the money that you spend over the years doing that buying glasses buying contacts you're going to spend the same amount that it would be to just get LASIK um and I got um, I actually got PRK. I'm not going to go into the details of the difference, but I got LASIK. Let's just keep it at that. Um, and I got it the weekend before Christmas. Um, I will say this this holiday season, I wasn't as festive. 
I wasn't as festive. I did not um, decorate my home. I didn't even take the Christmas decorations out the garage, girl. Like, you could have walked to my house and not known it was the holidays, girls. I, I just I just wasn't feeling it that much. Um, but I also was just really, really connected to me and connected to God. I mean, before the break, before Thanksgiving break, I was doing a lot of spiritual and mental work because what was happening was that, you know, I was working on my script, um, Unliked, my pilot, um, my first pilot, um, the one that got me signed. And the thing is, I kept going through all these rewrites. And I told you guys I was working on the rewrites. And I was like, oh, I thought this was the last one in the past episodes. But I got to a point where I really thought I was done. And I gave it to my manager. And he was just like, you know, it's good. Like, it's great. But this one note and that one note, um, it just sent me into another rewrite. And I just found myself getting sucked away from the story, getting sucked away from why I started writing this show. What is the point of this show? What is the heart of this show? What is the passion of this show? Um, because I was just going to rewrite, to rewrite, to rewrite, to rewrite. And this is what's going to break me into the industry. Like, what happens is you write a script, you write a pilot, and this is what they send to all of the producers. I mean, my manager showed me the producer list for every single person that this is going to go to. And I'm at a reputable management group. <laughs> so every single person on this list is going to read it. I'm talking like, I'm, I mean, I ain't going to name drop, girl, but think of any person that you could think, especially black. If they're black and they're a producer, I'm talking Kenya Burris, like, you know, um, Ryan Coogler, like all these different people um, that he was saying. And, you know, I'm looking at this list. And so it's a lot of pressure. And I found myself just trying to make the best script and, you know, get it done. Um, and it was pulling me away from, you know, what I actually started this show from. And so uh, I also was just working so hard out of that pressure and just like, I, I have to show up to it. This God is trying to get me there. I got to show up to it. I got to show up to it. So I was just really beating myself down. And so I was resting after Thanksgiving and I just, I was doing a little work here and there, but I told myself that, you know, for the rest of the year, um, I just want to chill. No new stuff. Let's take a break from this unliked script. My manager even told me, he was like, Tariq, you work so hard, man. Like, you know, enjoy the holidays, like, you know, chill. Um, and I also had my granddad tell me, you know, like, Tariq, every time I call you, you're working, man. When are you not working? And, you know, I'm, you know, come on now. I'm spiritual. Okay. If you're not spiritual, if you're not religious, you can, you can put it to the universe, astrology, whatever you want. Um, you know, I'm an omnis and a perennialist and I'll always say that. So I believe in all of the religions and I think that it's just, you know, where you're from, your culture, all of that, it really determines what, you know, what you believe in. But, um, I say that as a segue, cause I'm about to start talking about God, girl, <laughs> but God, the way that I've noticed that he communicates with me, um, I have a really good relationship with him where I'll sit down and I'll talk to him. I'll ask him what's going on. You know, I self-reflect. I look in with in me. You see in those moments when I like hug myself and I'm talking to myself um, and I'm getting, you know, I'm getting inside of me. I'm seeing how I'm feeling. Um, I have a belief that God is within us. That voice that's inside of us, like when we're at a space and it's like, I don't know, something seems off. Or when, you know, that dude is trying to pick you up and you're like, I don't know, I don't feel right about this. That feeling inside of you, I call it my GGA, my God, my guides and my ancestors. Um, so it could be God. It could be a guide, which is like a guardian angel or just an angel or someone that is a part of God's team that, you know, was assigned to you. Um, and then your ancestors. So that's like a grandma that may have passed that like looks after you or a great, 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 great grandma that you don't know about. That was, you know, for me, a slave, um, just my ancestors. So and I believe that God is within us um, and because their blood is within us. And then they become angels and become a part of God's team. I believe that they work together. And so. I, you know, sit down and I try to communicate and I try to, you know, um, see what's going on. And sometimes um, there's so much going on in life. You move in so much. Like I said, my script and everything I was working on that sometimes that we don't get to slow down and, you know, hear what's really being communicated to us. So like look at what's happening around us or what our situation is, which I'm going to talk more about later. But in this moment, I God couldn't reach me in that way. He, I guess he was trying to. Um, and it wasn't working. So who did he use? He uses people around you. He uses um, different ways to communicate. He told my manager told me, Tariq, you work a lot. Like you should chill. I didn't listen. I was like, that's my manager just trying to, you know, whatever. Like, you know, maybe he's maybe I thought that was his way of like, dude, you wrote a lot of rewrites. 
they're still coming back like a little uh, like just take a break and then come back to it. I thought that was like his nice way of saying that. But, you know, like I just take everything as like I'm just I'm, I can be hard on myself. Even when someone is nice to me, I can take it a different way. I can be a little hard on myself. I've noticed that, like, you know, I may have gotten better with the way I talk to myself. You know, um, I don't. I'm not like verbally hard on myself anymore. I don't tell myself, Tariq, like you got to do this. Like, no, I'm like, Tariq, you're good. I'm really, I show myself a lot of grace, but I realized how I was still hard on myself physically um, and, and, and subconsciously where there was a way, there's a, there's a part inside of me. Um, this is really going off, <laughs> but it's going to work. Watch. <laughs> there's a part inside of me that when I was younger, when I was juggled through homes, um, and the, 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 the 16 year old me that was like working really hard to get a full ride, right? I would sit down every single day after school to work on scholarships. And that hard work where I didn't think about my well being, I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't thinking about my health, I just was working. And then I got the full ride. And then I went to college and I got the good grades. And so I just kept getting positive reinforcements from something that wasn't healthy so that this part inside of me, when I'm telling myself I can rest, they're like, no, that does not work. Look what we did the past 10 years. So there's no way that that works. We know that this works. Let's stick with what we know. Um, but And so that's why it takes some time that when you come to a new understanding or a new way that you want to live, it's going to take you some time because this is so new. You may, you may have started this a month ago while that other thing that you've been doing, you've been doing that for 10 years. So it is going to take some time. And there, and there is going to be some moments where even up here, consciously, you know what's better, but some con subconsciously, you're still doing that old thing because that part inside of you, he doesn't see it as going against you. He's trying to protect you. He's trying to get you ahead. You know, he's just is trying to get me that full ride. He's trying to get me, you know, to college. He's trying to get me 100K on YouTube. He was trying to get me right now signed to the management. He's trying to get me, you know, this, this script done so that we can get to the producers so my show can get picked up. He's just trying to get us moving forward. Um, but I had to go to him and say, look, this is how, this is how we're going to do it now. And watch, you, we're we going to do good. But I think in this, it's just gotten better is what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, um, so it's, it, it, I just noticed that I was being a little subconsciously hard on myself. Um, and so God used my manager. And then when that didn't work, he sent, um, you know, my granddad. I don't talk to my granddad that much, but I love my granddad. And my granddad is a hard worker for a black, for a black straight granddaddy to tell me that I'm working too hard. Um, I mean, this is a man that worked, you know, on the assembly line at Ford. My granddad worked at Ford for 40 years. And for him to tell me, Tariq, you need a rest. You work a lot, man. And, you know, I get it. They're so proud of me. Like, they're, I do th I've do. i done things that has not been seen in my family. Like, I live in L.A. I'm from Southern Virginia. Like, yeah, I, my aunt and uncle took me in when I was 15, so I moved to Maryland. But I'm from, like, Virginia Beach, Portsmouth, Chesapeake, Virginia. Like, people where I'm from like this you know like yeah we got you know Missy Elliott we got Timbaland we got Pharrell but like it, it's you know it's it's not common you know where I'm from a lot of people's parents work at the shipyard you know a lot of people have you know it, it's not they're proud of me and they know for you to have gotten out there we've seen you work hard but to, he's like Tariq at some point you gotta rest um, and it was that it was my cousin telling me I need to rest. And then I started realizing everyone's telling me to rest, but I thought I was doing a good job at resting. Come on. We've talked about this a lot on my podcast. <laughs> They're like, Hey, Tariq, you still not rested. I promise I got better, but God was telling me that I still, this is something I still needed to work on. So I said, okay. And so during this time, you know, I was just resting and I, and I just wasn't that festive. I was just really in a lay down and whatever comes to me and doing things for fun. I started painting and doing things that like give me fulfillment and joy that I get nothing from it in a way of like success. Like there, it doesn't, it doesn't, I won't make any money. I won't get a job. I won't get recognition. I won't get, you know, validation. All it will do is validate myself and that I gave myself time to do this. Um, I love dancing. I love creating. And so I think that it's just important to incorporate fun in your life, doing things that like you love to do that gives you joy and it gives it there's nothing that will come of it because you that pressure is what I was trying to you know get away from I wanted a breather from that so it was to do things that still gave me joy but had no pressure so I also write started writing a new script um and writing that new script <laughs> I started writing another show called redeem that i i don't want to share the law the the log line of is so good but this is a show that 
I wrote, I, I wrote like the pitch and the outline for back in June and I just never started writing it because my manager was just like, you know, once we send this workout um, and we pitch to other stuff, you can get paid weekly to write it. So just don't write it right now. Like wait until, you know, we're out there and you break into the industry. And, and if we sell somebody, they like the idea, then they'll just pay you. Um, but I wanted to do something that, like I said, gave me joy um, and fulfilled me. And there was no pressure. There's no obligation. There's nothing I will get from this. Um, and my manager doesn't even know I'm working on it right now. <laughs> um, I was just doing it for fun. And now I've written something that is the best thing I've ever written. <laughs> like it's, it represents me so perfectly. I love it so much. Um, but I really didn't come here to talk about that. Um, and really just give you an idea of this time where, and you know, why I wasn't really putting up decorations. I was just like really connecting with me and connecting spiritually, um, and so I decided to do LASIK, you know, the two days before Christmas because I wasn't going home. You know, I live alone. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it's OK. You know, I was feeling good um, and I actually wasn't depressed. I was actually really happy. Um, and so I did LASIK before Christmas. Um, and one of my friends, he was like, oh, you're staying here for Christmas. You should come over. My family's coming into town um, and we're going to have a dinner. And so I said, OK, I would love to come. You know, I'm, it's better than being in the house alone on Christmas. So definitely wanted to go. The only thing is <laughs> I got LASIK, what, two, three days before Christmas. And I was good because I, they, they say after LASIK, you should sleep. Um, that's the best way to heal. And so I slept for two straight days. Lord have mercy, girl. Um, two straight days. And it didn't hurt. It's just like discomfort, like your eyes, like you just want to close your eyes. And so that's why, you know, they gave me Xanax, girl. So I was knocked out, girl. I was good. <laughs> I was out like a light. Mm. And so by the time Christmas came, you know, I was good. You know, like the day I woke up, like I was like, my eyes are okay. I think I can go. Cause if I wasn't okay, I wasn't going to go. Like I wasn't going to be around, you know, these people um, and I wasn't okay. But the thing is, this friend is actually one of my newer best friends. Um, and I love him so much and I really care about him. And, you know, I'm the type of person, you know, I'm raised by Southern people. I'm Southern, you know, in me. And, you know, I when I meet people's parents uh, that are really important, people that are important to me, when I meet their parents, it's a big deal to me. I want your family to like me. It's a big deal. <laughs> I do. I do. I want your family to like me. Um, I, it's just a, I don't know, the way I was raised, if you have the respect of the family, then that's just the best. It's the worst when you have a friend and your family does not like that friend. It's just the worst. Um, and so, you know, I went um, and we were having a great time. I was connecting. I was talking to his mom, his grandma, and we was hitting it off, having a great time. Um, and I had one martini. We all were drinking, but I had one martini and that just, it just went left because, you know, this was the first time I realized, you know, why doctors say not to drink when you're on meds because girl, I had one martini and it felt like 20. Oh my God. I got so sick. I got so, I got so drunk. I, I got so drunk. Um, <laughs> like it just one martini. I mean, I just got so drunk because of the meds. And so I went on the couch and I just laid down. And at some point I was like, no, I feel really sick. I need to go home. So I was like, y'all, I'm going home. Um, and I came home and I just went straight to the toilet and I was on my knees and that's all I'm gonna say. I don't want it to get too gory, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it was real bad. So now y'all do not, I know better. Do not mix your meds with alcohol, girl. It is not a good idea. Um, but I was really embarrassed because like I said, I really wanted his parents to like me and I felt like I just ruined it because, you know, I got LASIK and, you know, I got drunk and then I was sick and I had to leave. I just thought it wasn't good. But, you know, my friend was like, they loved you. Um, they were like, you were so positive. And me, you know, like I said, it felt like I drank 20 martinis. So I didn't remember completely. It was flashes. And he was like, yeah, they said that you were so positive. And I was like, really? Um, what was we talking about? He was like, you know, just different stuff. Like, you know, I would talk about, you know, how, you know, things I went through in the past year and you would just like say stuff. Um, and it just made me think because a lot of people always tell me that I'm so positive and I know I'm positive. I'm a positive guy. But, you know, I think that when people use the word positive, especially in today's time, it's, it's so like, I'm going to say it, performative or in, it's intentional. And not that there's anything wrong with being intentional. I think that like, it's like being nice. 
you know, like people like be nice. It's like they're trying to be nice. And I'd rather you just be a kind person than to be nice. Um, because I feel like being nice is all about people pleasing and making the other person feel like comfortable, which is fine. It just I think you get what I'm saying. And, and so when I was thinking about, you know, what is it exactly that makes me positive? You know, what is my positivity? Because there's different kinds of positivity and, and people use it in different ways. Um, I just, you know, thinking about what he said, he was like he was sharing things about the past year and things he didn't enjoy or something. Um, and I would just give a positive outlook. And the thing is, I'm never just trying to, like, make people feel good. Like, while I love doing that, um, I just naturally see the good and the bad. And, you know, I've always done this, you know, on, you know, with my trauma. Um, like, you know, and I did that on my YouTube, you know, with, like, calling my mom that left me 10 years ago, coming out to my dad, talking about, you know, my gender identity, you know, just a lot of things that I've talked about on my YouTube um, it was about like things I went through and people thought I was exploiting my trauma um, for views and clicks when really I just realized I went through the world, you know, telling people about these things um, and just being so positive about it. And the way that I talked about it inspired people um, and, it, and it helped change people's lives and it helped them look at their own things differently. And I realized that that was my positivity was that I always see the good and the bad. And, you know, when people used to tell me before that I was so positive, I used to think that it was because of my trauma. You know, I would say, you know, well, I've been through a lot, you know, and the only way that I could be happy was if I saw the good and the bad. You know, it was kind of like it was more of like a response and a mechanism that I used to be happy rather than it just being who I was. Like, I would just say that it was because of my trauma that I'm this way, that I'm this positive. Like, girl, I've been through so much. But I, I realized that it wasn't even the trauma who made me who I was. I was who I was before the trauma happened. And I realized that because even through the trauma that I was going through as a kid, I always just saw and felt the good in what was happening um, in the bad. Um, but the difference is back then, you know, and, and through now, through, you know, to this point, I would always, you know, go through it and I would be sad or whatever's happening, be depressed. Um, and then later I'll be like, wow, well, you know, this, if this wouldn't have happened, that wouldn't have happened, you know, and if this didn't happen, then I wouldn't be this way. Um, and so it would take some time after for me to pr finally get to the other side and to get to the bright side of like what I went through. But what changed in 2022 was that I was able to find a way to be happy in my bad moments. Like it didn't have to wait until two months later, two months after. Like while I was going through a bad thing, I was able to see how it was helping me. Um, and, and a lot of things, I, you know, a lot of things I could credit for this. I think that in this past year, you know, I went, I went through a lot last year, like 2022. Um, and this is really what this episode is about, right? It's like when we review the, the past year, we always just think about like the good things, you know, and the good things that, you know, the, the successes. So I got a new job or, you know, I got my new car and I did this and, you know, I boom, boom, boom. And you reach some goals, which is amazing. But a lot of times we never really talk about, you know, the bad things, um, and it's so funny because when I talk about my past year, I always talk about the bad things. I start with the bad things and I just talk about how I am so happy that they happened. And I think that that is what they were talking about at the dinner is like, you're so positive because most people would say, oh, well, I did this. I made this money. Boom, boom, boom. And me, I'm like, you know, I went through a really bad breakup <laughs> and, you know, I was really depressed and, you know, I'm just happy because I showed up for myself. Um, and, you know. I think that is the positivity is that in, in those things that most people see as shameful, most of those things that people see is like, I should keep this to myself or like, I haven't finished working on that. So let me not bring it up because they may call it out now. I think that I have no fear and that I, I find that as a superpower. And I think that everybody should see that as a superpower because the, the bad things that we go through are usually what create our greatest breakthroughs. And our greatest breakthroughs are usually what create our identity. And I think that's what makes me positive. But the difference is um, I, this past year, wanted to, I started working on, you know, seeing the good while I was in the bad and not waiting until after. And I think, and I think that that's what real positivity is about. 
You know, it's not, you know, the toxic positivity where you have a feeling and you're like, I'm sad. Like, nope, you're not sad. Let's go out. Let's go have some fun. Whoa, that's just, you know, suppressing your feelings <laughs> and acting like they're not real. And I think therapy was a huge help in getting me here because in therapy, I learned that, you know, two feelings that may not agree with each other can still be there. And I think what really helped me do that was like really me healing with my parents and understanding, like I would go to therapy and whenever I talked about my parents, I would just always, you know, well, I get it while they wasn't there, you know, you know, both of my parents were addicts. I know that it's hard. It's a disease. And, you know, and, you know, you know, the jobs, it was hard. And I would just always give explanations and, and you know, uh, excuses um, for, you know, things that I needed at the time. I was a child and my therapist helped me realize that, you know, while that's true, like, yeah, you can understand why your parents weren't there. But at the same time, Tariq, there's pain inside of you because you didn't have, you know, what you wanted and you were juggled through homes and you needed stability. And you were 12 and 13 and you had to figure things out on your own. You were going through queerness. You were overweight. You were juggled through homes and you needed support and guidance through that. And while you can understand that your parents went through that, you also needed those things as well. And I think sometimes when we have those feelings that don't agree with each other, it's like, you know, we feel these things, especially when we share them with the family or we share this with a friend or with your partner, whoever it is or whatever the feeling and, you know, the people involved, they see that as you being negative or you, you know, bringing up the past or like harboring on your feelings. We know that this feeling can be here at the same time while I understand, but there's still this feeling inside of me. And I think before I would just keep the understanding and push everything I didn't want off the table. And so I wouldn't allow myself to have those feelings. And I think that getting to a place where I kept allowing both feelings to sit on the table, whether it was my parents, whether it was my ex, it was an abusive mentally and emotionally re relationship. But at the same time, I loved him <laughs> and he was my best friend. Um, and it, it got toxic, but he helped me with so many things, you know, and it's allowing both of those things to be on the table at once. And, and, and that, I think, making more room on this table and it's not like a this feeling or that feeling. And the thing is, a lot of times we'll use the feeling that we think will get us ahead. So if we're trying to move on from that ex, we're not going to keep those feelings that say like, you know, he was a best friend. He did teach me this. We're going to just, oh, he ugly and I don't care about him. We're just going to only keep the things that's going to keep us safe. Hmm. You see, we're going to keep those feelings that say, you know, you know, he's horrible. I don't like him. I don't talk. He's, uh, he's ugly. Like, and look, those feelings, whatever you have, girl, I don't know what you're going through, <laughs> but you know, just those feelings that like will keep us angry because the real, what we really want is to stay away from them. Right. Especially if it was abusive, like in my situation or whatever. And it's like, the, the goal is you want to be safe. And you have like probably gone away from this person and you're finally feeling better and you're getting better. And you're afraid that if you let these feelings on the table that tell you this was, you know, there was good there. You're afraid that you'll go back for the ounce of good. Um, but there will, I, I, I challenge you um, to allow both of those feelings to sit on the table, baby, because they're within you. And if it's anything that we learn and, and we've talked about on this podcast is, you know, your feelings won't go anywhere. <laughs> they will come back up. And so when you accept them and you take control, you know, baby, we, we can, you know, on this table for me, it was like, I can miss my ex. Like during this process, I would tell my friends, I miss my ex. And I would say good things. Like if I had a memory that was good of him, like I would be able to do say those things and it would trigger them because they they would get scared and they would think that I would go back and like, Oh Lord. Or like, Tariq, like they just, they got scared. And I think that's because a lot of people do not allow opposing opinions to sit on the table together when they should. Um, um, because when you make more room for, for all of those feelings, then you can have a better understanding of where you are and you can see how they're working together and how this puzzle goes together. And I think that allowing more feelings to be there at once for me, while I was in the bad of things, on my table, like if something bad was happening, I was able to also put on the table what good was coming out of that bad. You know, like, and, I, and I'm going to give you an example, right? I'm going to give you an example. This past year, I went through so much, girl. But something that was really big for me this past year was I had a real financial dip. And I talked about this um, in a previous, ep uh, you know, episode. 
Um, in Q3 of this, in 2022, I made no money. I made no money. And if you don't know what Q3 is, it's just the year cut up in quarters. So, you know, Q1, Q2, Q3 is like um, in, at the end of the summer or fall. Um, and so I didn't make any money. And it's because I was working really hard to get signed um, in the management for my writing for TV in the summer. And so I got signed in July, right? And so after that, me and my manager was just really working and I was trying to prove to them and you know, I'm really serious about this and I was just I was just really excited about my writing. And so I was not posting that much. Um I was not posting and in order to get, you know, deals or offers, they, you know, companies have to see that you're active online. And so I wasn't active online. I wasn't making any I wasn't making any any content. And so I didn't get any off. I mean, I got some offers, but they were so low. And I was like, I have not done something this low in a while, and I don't know if it's worth it. Um, and my ego was there, you know. It was some deals that I could have taken, but you know, because I've been doing this for so long, I was just like, you know, I deserve this, and you know, I should be getting paid this, you know. Um, and so there's a lot of reasons, but I'm saying this to say that I wasn't making any money in Q3, and so my bills are high. <laughs> you know, the thing about making more money, um, you would. It's, it's just, your lifestyle just, you know, goes up like my rent, you know, I had an assistant, um, you know, my team just it's a lot of things to pay for. And so for months, I was just spending all of my savings. Um, and I just saw every month a large chunk come from my savings. And it got really low to a point where I needed money. And my business manager was like, you're going to need some money. <laughs> like you're going to need a deal. And not like just being transparent, not like two thousand, three thousand, five thousand, girl. My monthly expenses, girl. Oof, girl. Um, up there in the in the five digits. So it's like I have, you know, I gotta make real money. And so I was getting really scared. Um, and I don't know if we've talked about it so much here yet, but you know, I, um, I don't know if it goes away, but I have like poverty consciousness, and I've gotten really better at it. Um, from my homelessness and not having much, you know, money growing up. And so I just get really nervous uh, with money and I'll always just over save because I get scared. But yeah, so I just wasn't making any money, girl. And I was getting really nervous and I mean, like crying every day because I was like, God, please send me something like, please, like there's no way that you moved me out here and put me in this lifestyle and to for it to crumble. Like I just, I was really, I was crying. I was, I was anxious every day, um, like shaking and I couldn't focus because I was so afraid of doing something wrong and making it worse. Um, and it got really bad. But what I did instead of like going through the bad and then later when things got better being like, oof, well, I got out of that. Boom, boom. The difference is in this past year when I was going through bad things, because I was so connected um, to myself and God, in these moments, I would ask myself, Tariq, why is this happening? <laughs> why is this happening? You know, not in a way of like, why me? But like, how did I get here? How did I get here? And what is this bringing out of me? And what is this saying? What is this communicating to me? What is needed of me in this time? Because I don't know, when you when you live a life that is very intentional and you have goals and spiritual I don't I don't I don't think that anything in my life personally happens whimsically like I think that everything is intentional like just looking over the course of my life and how everything played a part in something like I went to school and I majored in biology right and I don't use my biology degree at all, <laughs> like at all right now. Like, yeah, at all. But I'm going to tell you how I do use it. And I'm going to tell you why I think God made me go to school for biology. Because when I was in school for biology and I was in college, I was doing YouTube at the same time. And it was really hard doing both. Like, I would have to like go to organic chemistry for last for five hours and then film a YouTube video and edit and post. And I had to be consistent to grow like you know, I wasn't, you know, as big as I was now then. So I just had to do a lot of work. And so a lot of times I would miss class. Um, but missing class, I would have to study on my own and learn a lot of the things on my own. So if you know science, chemistry, like, you know, reactions, mechanisms, uh, biochemistry, I would just read textbooks. And through the years of 
being in science, even going to class, there's so many things that you have to learn in the library or in a tutoring session that you don't learn in a 50 minute lecture class. Like you have to do a lot of self teaching in science. And I think that going to college for science taught me how to teach myself and how to like really look at material and learn. And, you know, because of that, when I started writing, I was able to teach myself how to screenwrite. Do you understand that I read only two books? <laughs> I read only two books on how to screenwrite. And I taught myself how to screenwrite, reading other examples, watching movies and television and taking notes and just learning it from watching other people. Because I learned how to teach myself in college, I was able to teach myself for this new thing that God have, had given me. And so... I saw how I don't think that I would have been able to do that as well if I did if I wasn't a science major because teaching yourself is so important in science um, and that's why I don't ever think that my time is being wasted you know people are like oh I'm wasting my time or like this is wasting my I don't ever I really don't I think that whatever I'm pulled to because I operate in spirit a lot of I do a lot of things because it's in me I want to do it I feel I feel a gut feeling and I follow it. And so, I, like I said, God is within me. And I think that gut feeling, it's in me is who I am, but it's also God pulling me to something, right? And I think that if I follow that voice in me and that feeling in me, it's always going to pull me to something that's going to mean something and that's intentional. And so I think that that is why I went to school for science and, and for so many other different reasons. But with that mindset of thinking that nothing is whimsical, everything's intentional, when I was going through this financial dip, I was like, God, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Because it was so hard for me. I have created a lifestyle where, you know, I'm really comfortable. <laughs> I was really comfortable. I would get massages two times a week, three times a week, take a break, do the Like I lived a lifestyle and at a point where I got so comfortable and I was attached to the lifestyle and I started thinking about it. That financial dip made financial dip made me do so many different things. It made me get back to being intentional with my spending looking at my budget, taking out things I didn't need, things that I used to, and I'm gonna just be very honest, things I used to do, but I've gotten to a point where I got comfortable, girl, I'll be real with you. Look, when you go to, look, all my life, I ain't had no money, girl. So yeah, I got a little bit of money, girl. I started living the life of an old white lady with a billionaire husband. Well, I'm not a billionaire, but you, you get what I'm saying, girl. Housewife, lived a very housewife life. And you know, I was loving it and I feel no shame in it. Because I think that God wanted me to do that. You know, I think that you look, he said, you worked really hard all your life. You didn't have much. You've been through a lot. Enjoy this. Enjoy your money. Go get that Balenciaga bag. Go do this. Go do that. Um, and then it came a point where it was like, okay, you had your time. You ready? You want to be a writer? Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Let's get back to work. And I think that that financial dip woke me up financially because I was, you know, it, it, it put me back into the mindset of, you know, just being more cognizant and smart about my spending. Also, it helped me unattach from that luxury and that lifestyle that I was living before that. Like I was spending a lot of money, a lot of money on things that I, I don't regret. Like I love all the things I have, girl, my Dior bags and all that, girl. I love fashion, girl. Um, you know, and you know, the trips and just, you know, my way of living, taking my dog to daycare here and there and, you know, just all of the things I was doing. Um, and I think that it was just time for a new season. I'm pivoting. I'm going into a new career and I see a lot of leads happening. I see a lot of things happening for me. God is putting me in position and then the money gets low. No, this isn't because he wants me to be broke. This isn't because he's telling me I'm doing something wrong. This isn't because I'm doing something wrong. This is because I'm doing something right. I was looking at the bad I was going through and it was really bad, y'all. Like I, to a point where I was asking some friends like, hey, if I need to borrow this much money, can I? And it's a lot of money. So I'm like, it was like, oof, you okay, girl? I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and because of my poverty consciousness, I get real weird with money when I start having that fear. Like I don't go out to eat. I would like turn the heat off in my house and shiver, like thinking that's going to make an impact. Like I get, you know, but I was doing better. Um, it helped me unattach from a lifestyle that, you know, was just for a season. Um, because I'll be honest, in that lifestyle, it's very easy to get detached and to just think that this is going to be your life for the rest of your life. And to, you, you just get really comfortable. And I think God just 
needed to wake me up and say that, no, we're doing this and I need you to do this for like what's coming. Um, and so in the moment where I was going through something bad, I was able to see how it was doing good for me. Um, and I also was proud of myself because I was able to make those changes. There's a lot of people, girl, that like go through financial dips or go through things like this and they don't know how to submit to like what's happening. Submit to like and accept your new reality. Like, yeah, you used to have that money. Yeah, you used to have that job. Yeah, you used to, but now you don't. And that's okay. And it took some, it took me some time too. I was in a little denial for a little time. And then I was like, no, Tariq, you, you got to make some changes. And it was because I was able to show up what was, show up to what was expected of me that I'm able to get to the next step. I think a lot of times these bad things that happen to us, we think that they're like happening to us, but they're actually happening for us. Like the breakup, that was like something that in a moment, it felt like something bad happening to me. But if I didn't get out of that relationship, I wouldn't be at peace like I am now. I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't be doing this podcast probably. I, you know, a lot of things. My show I just started writing came out of that relationship, um, came out of that breakup. Like, and so I'm just noticing that a lot of these things that happen that are like bad and that put us in these like moments of like, this is a horrible year. Like, why is this happening to me? We need to sit back and we need to think about like, what is happening in me? How is this changing me? How the way that I show up to this is going to determine the new norm that I create. Remember, I said the only way to create a new norm is to keep to do the new norm, like to break out of a last habit. Like we were just saying, you know, you went 10 years doing that other thing. So today could be the first time of you trying something new. You could do it on a Monday. Tuesday, you messed up. You went back to the old thing. Wednesday, that's fine. Wednesday, you do the new thing. Thursday, you do the new thing. Friday, you messed up again. That's cool. Saturday, you do the new thing. And to a point where you just keep doing the new thing. It's a practice. And I really think that that is what, you know, seeing the good in the bad is really about. Is that when you are going through a, a bad time, right? Don't do fake positivity. This is fake positivity. Oh, I'm good. Oh, I ain't worried about that. I ain't worried about that. We good. We boom, boom, boom. No, you worried, girl. And that's okay. That's you're worried. You can put that on the table. Let's make this table right on that table. So let's use my money example. I was scared. I was anxious. I was worried. So because of that, instead of acting like it didn't exist, I showed up to those things. I was listening to more sermons. I was, you know, checking in with myself more, doing more things that made me feel comfort because I knew and meditating more because I was so anxious that I was like, I need to meditate to get my breath together. My heartbeat was going crazy. So I was showing up to those things feelings that weren't so good on the table. But then I also at the same table was asking myself, what is this moment teaching me? What could, how could this moment possibly be good? Well, well, I was, I realized that I had never been in a situation like this. Like, yeah, I, you know, I had been moments I didn't have money and been broke before, but what was different this time was that I have built so much and I've gotten to a place of comfort and the fear was that I was literally going to lose it all and that I was going to not make any money and that I wasn't important anymore. Um, you know, like I wasn't making any impact online. Like I, they don't want to pay me. Just a lot of things. Um, when really, I think that that was, if anything, that moment taught me how I should never be worried because I wasn't in such a interesting space and in a low place where I still didn't give up on myself. I still didn't respond to pressure. Like in that time, there was a lot of things I was thinking of doing. I was going to sell a lot of things in my house. I was going to do this to make money, to like make ends meet. But God didn't tell me to do that. Now, if God told me to do that and that was in my heart and I needed to do it, I would have did it. You know, if he told me to get a roommate, girl, my ego, girl, I don't know, girl, girl, I don't know somebody in my house, girl. But like, if he told me to do that, girl, I probably would have did it, girl. But he did not. You know, in this moment, there was a lot of pressure to just start making content that I didn't feel connected to. Make stuff that, you know, will go viral. Get the money coming in. But God didn't tell me to do that. God kept told me to keep focusing on my writing. And I was like, but God, writing doesn't make me any money. That doesn't make any sense. I was like really struggling with what he was trying to get me to do. And I... I looked at everything I had and I truly believe that it was because of that voice in me and God. And that voice in me told me to keep writing. 
And so I listened. And if anything, that, that bad time taught me how I have nothing to worry about. If I always follow that voice in me and, and, and God and my dreams, I will be okay. I don't think I've been that scared in a, very, in a long time. And I listened to him and he literally made sure I was, I was okay. I spent those weeks just writing when I was, I, I could have been making content to bring money in. And I was writing and right when I finished writing and I sent it to my manager, I got some deals that came and took care of me for another month. God was like, here's one more month. I ain't done with you. Because, you know, one month was cool for me. You know, it wasn't like a savior. It was just like, oh, just another month. You know, I got to do this again next month to figure out how I'm going to make money for the next month. Like, I was really going check to check, girl. Um, but that was God testing me. Are you going to Are you gonna fold into pressure? Or are you going to listen to me? Are you going to listen to what's inside of you? Are you going to still follow your dreams? Are you going to listen to that pressure that's telling you you could lose it all? You don't mean anything. You're not important anymore. What you're posting doesn't matter. It's not lucrative. You need to do like the, all these things that was that was that was not me. That was anxiety. That was fear. And through those moments, I'm able to identify the difference between those the pressure of the world and the pressure of, you know, God and spirituality and what's inside of me. And I don't want to ever respond to the pressure of the world because that's not what got me here. If I listened to the pressure of the world, I would have been in med school, dental school. I would have stayed in science. You think I would have kept doing YouTube? When I started YouTube, this was not popular. This was not like, girl, people looked at me crazy. You didn't make money like people make money now. Like, I never listened to the pressures of the world. I always listen to the pressures within me, the pressures from God. And it's not pressuring. It's a push. And the pressures of the world are the ones that make you feel suffocated. The ones that make you feel like this, this needs to be done. This needs to be done. Like, you know, out of fear. Um, and so in those moments, you, you see how like that financial dip taught me so much. And so in those moments, I'm asking myself, you know, what, how can this be good? You know, what is this showing me? How, what is this teaching me? Um, and also what is required of me in this time? Because something can't teach you if you're not showing up to be a student. It's just like how nobody can help you. You can't help somebody that doesn't want to be helped. And so like, while you know, a lot of times we want things to happen to us and for us. But no, we have to be in partnership. And it's asking what is required of me in this time. And during that time, I was hearing you need to unattach, uh, unattach from that past lifestyle. You had your time. It was a season. We're in a new season, baby. And this new season where you ain't making no money and you broke and you're budgeting, girl, it's not forever. It's not forever. This is just what we need to do right now. There's something in this. And, you, and I didn't like it. Who likes that? You know, when you make a certain amount of money and then you take a pay cut. Nobody likes that. It's not fun. It's not fun. And but the thing is, I was willing to choose what was best for me rather than what was comfortable for me. And, and where, you know, what, what was requiring growth of me? Because the, the real requirement was unattached from that past lifestyle, accept this one right now, budget. You don't need that many massages. He don't need to go to the daycare. You just gonna have to listen to him cry in that room over there. You got three bedrooms, girl. You have a lot. You have a lot. You know, and a lot of times we think, you know, when things change, we think something's taking something from me, take, taking my comfort, taking my money, take whatever it is taking. When, when no, it's, it's just a season. And, and I had to just accept it. And I had to see what was required of me in that time. And it was budgeting and it was being smarter with my money um, and think and, and having a, a more schedule and better balance with writing and social media and creating content because I didn't have a balance before. Um, and so in that moment, I was learning so many things that was needed of me in that time. And it made me get into a new mindset that is needed for my next step, because after this, I'm going into like a, a, a place in my career where I've never been and doing so many different things that I've never done before. And I had to get out of my comfort zone. I had to get back active. I had to get back, okay, what's happening? Okay, we got to do this over here. We got to do this. It put me in a different position. And so 
that's how I think that I stay positive. And the thing is, it's understanding that during that time, just because you know this may be doing good for me and, you know, this is teaching me this, don't mean it's going to feel great. Like I just said, nobody likes that. Like it's still those other things can still be on the table. I hate this. I don't like this. <laughs> you know, I am anxious. I'm scared. Those are all on the table. You don't have to swipe anything out off. Look at what's on the table and look at how you can show up for all of them. I promise you, you can show up for all of them. You just got to make space for them. But when you shove them off and you throw them off of the table, you got to look at what you're also throwing off the table. Because if I threw off, you know, what is required of me and how is this, you know, helping me, then I would, I would throw off the table also the, the step that comes after this. Because this is a journey. All of this, like I said, nothing is whimsical. Everything is helping you for your next step. And so if you don't show up to what's happening right now, you may miss the lesson that you need for the next class. I was so good in organic chemistry. Like I, I loved organic chemistry and I was that girl that I never came to class and I would come to the test and get an A. Oh my gosh, if you watch my YouTube, then you, you've seen those vlogs, right? Um, and I always said, to, well, I would tutor a lot of people, you know, in the library before organic chemistry. And, you know, a lot of times they would spend so much time trying to remember the mechanisms when a lot of times I could just guess what would happen. And they would, they would be like, how would you, how did you know that? I was like, well, this, this element doesn't like being positive. So of course I would take a hydrogen off so that you can make it more negative. And it would be like, well, how did you know that? I'm like, well, we learned that in general chemistry and they didn't pay attention in general chemistry because the way that they taught us in high school, they gave us so many subjects and things that we didn't really care about or things that we didn't want to study or major in that we thought that if we just could get by and learn and get a good grade and get to the next grade, then, you know, oh, trigonometry. I don't even know about that no more, girl, you know? And so when you get to college, you know, you take these classes and every semester you move on to a new subject and you think that what you learned last semester got an A, moving on from that. But science really taught you how what you learned before, we going to build on that next year. So if a lot of people in organic chemistry would fail because they did not know general chemistry, what we learned in our first year. And, if, and, and that's the same for our lives. Like if you don't look at like the bad that's happening right now, I promise you, if you live life with purpose and what you do has intention and you're listening to that voice within you, everything you are going through is for a reason. It's helping you. And it may not feel good. Everything you go through will not feel good, especially when you're following your dreams. You're going to have a lot of moments where it doesn't feel great, but that's what makes the top of the mountain feel so much better is because you've been to the bottom. A person who's just been walking on a steady level, you know, and, and taking a walk and they can see what's happening. They see the two miles in front of them. There's no excitement. But for someone that's been at the bottom in a valley and they see the top of that mountain and they're tired going up, their knees hurt. They take a break. Start again in a year. They start that business again. They keep climbing that mountain. They get to the top and you feel so much better. Not only do you feel much better, it's cooler the high you go. The altitude is cooler. It's much more breeze. And that walk down, you get to enjoy your labor. You get to go down the mountain and you're not going to feel that same pain that you had coming up, right? And that was me. Going down that mountain was me enjoying <laughs> my money, right? That was me living that life where I could have those massages and have that life, right? And then what happened was you get to the next mountain and you realize that ooh, going up ain't like coming down. So that bottom of that mountain, right, that valley, that, 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 that crevice down right there, right, was me losing my money and me not having the same amount of money I had before. And I had to start budgeting. I had to change my lifestyle. I'm going up. A, it doesn't feel good. But that's because you're growing, and you're climbing. If you want to stay comfortable, you don't have to climb these mountains. But we're not here for comfort. We're here to get to our dreams and to get to the top of the mountain. So yeah, it may not feel good. But in those moments where you don't feel good, ask yourself those questions. Why is this happening? What could this teach me? What is this teaching me? What is required of me in this time? And what helps me is I journal. Um, and, and journaling 
helps me keep track of that progress, helps me see how, wow, I thought like this two weeks ago, and now I think like this, because there's some journal entries in my journal, girl, where I'm crying, girl, you see the teardrops, girl, because the money ain't the same, <laughs> but you see in the journal entries as I keep going, and I'm making space for everything, and I'm showing up for myself, how I'm learning, like, wow, you know, uh, the other day I did this and it didn't make me as anxious as two weeks ago. And you see that progress and you're going to see, you're going to look back at how everything you went through was needed for where you need to be today. And if you, and if you don't, let's do, think about what you've been through, right? And think about your success. Think about the things that you succeeded in and think about how the things you went through before that, you know, may not have felt good. How did the, how those things that you went through, what did they teach you? And that thing that it taught you, how did that contribute to the success you had after? Because, and, and when you look at that, look, and when you do that, you're going to start seeing how everything you went through is helping you. And that is, you know, looking at my past year, that's why it was important for me to not only just look at the good things. I really start with the bad because those are the things that really made me so powerful. My toxic relationship helped me so much. It helped me to be able to identify my emotions in, these, in this way. I went through so much emotion. Grieving my boyfriend helped me learn how to grieve so that I was able to then grieve my mom and dad in a different way. And I never did. They're still alive. But if you listen to the past episodes, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, learning how to grieve because of my ex taught me how to grieve in other ways. So when I do experience loss, even if it's not a person, I'm way more accepting and those feelings I have, I know how to hold them and show up to them rather than suppress them and throw them away. Right? Because when we do that, it's just going to put us in depression. And then when we go into depression, we can't work. We can't do the work. We can't make the art. We can't do anything. And that's because we're ignoring all these feelings and suppressing these feelings. It's so many things I went through in this past year that just have helped me be who I am today and made me wise um, and so I really wanted to share that and I wanted to offer that word because I think that in this time, especially a week into this new year, some people are, like I said, are probably already being extremely hard on themselves. And I want you to one, show yourself grace, but also look at in these moments that are hard or these moments that seem like a storm, what is this time teaching you and how can you show up to it? And also coming out of the storm you'll have greater appreciation and gratitude for what you went through and you'll be not that i'm the standard or anything but you'll be like me at the christmas party where i'm bringing up all of the bad things that happened in the past year and i'm saying how i'm so happy they happened every year for me has been a great year even the hardest years and i think that's why god keeps bringing me back to 2020 and there's something that I hadn't healed on from 2020 that he's been bringing to my attention. And I've been doing a lot of work to get back to finding the good in the bad. Because there's a lesson. During that time, I was so, I was so depressed and I had just met my ex and I was going through that. And there was some lessons that I wasn't able to see in that moment and it's never too late. That's another word. It's never too late to get a lesson out of what happened. And so he's getting me to, to see what was the good in that bad. Because if you only see the bad, you'll hang on to that and you will become bitter and you will become upset and it'll keep you from getting to the top of that mountain. And it's important that you see the good in the bad. So that is my word for today. And that's <laughs> where I'm at. Um, it is ex extremely dark in here. <laughs> um, I hope it's good enough to post, but I love you guys. Um, I'm, uh, excited for this year. I'm excited for you. Um, and I'm excited for you to see the good and the bad moments because I promise it's not all bad. Um, and don't exclude any of your feelings, put them on the table. And so, yeah, I'm just repeating myself at this point. I love you guys. I hope you, have, you guys have a great day. Please make sure that you subscribe to the podcast and my YouTube online and you leave a review. It really helps me. Um, and follow me on Instagram and TikTok. It's Tariq Ali. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon. And I love you. <laughs>